Section 33 of Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Pamela Krantz. Up One Pair of Stairs of My Book House. Edited by Olive Beaupre Miller. Clyde by Flora J. Cook. Clyde was not always a sunflower, turning on her stem to watch the journeying sun. Long ago she was a water nymph and lived in a cave at the bottom of the sea. The walls of the cave were covered with pearls and lovely pink seashells. The floor was made of snow white sand, and the chairs were of amber with soft mossy cushions. On each side of the cave opening was a forest of coral and sea fans. Behind the cave were Clytie's gardens. Here she spent long hours taking care of her sea anemones, her star lilies, or in planting rare kinds of seaweed. Clytie kept her favorite horses in the garden grotto. These were the swift-darting goldfish and the slow-moving turtles. For a long time she was very happy and contented. The sea nymphs loved Clytie and wove for her dresses of the softest of green sea lace. They told her all their best stories. One day they took her to the mermaid's rock to hear the mermaid sing. Clytie liked one song best of all. It told of a glorious light which shone on the top of the water. After Clytie heard this song, she could think of nothing else, but longed day and night to see the wonderful light. But no ocean nymph dared take her to it, and she grew very unhappy. Soon she neglected her garden and all her sea treasures. In vain the nymphs begged her to forget the enchanting light. They told her no sea nymph had ever seen it, or ever could hope to see it. But Clytie would not listen, and to escape them she spent more and more of her time in her shell carriage, riding far away from her cave. In this way she could dream, undisturbed, of the glorious light which the mermaid had called the sun. Now it happened that late one summer night, when the sea was warm and the turtles were going very slowly, Clytie fell asleep. Unguided, the turtles went on and on and up and up through the green waters until they came out at last close to a wooded island. As the waves dashed the carriage against the shore, Clytie awoke. Trembling and filled with wonder, she climbed out of the shell and sat down upon a rock. It was early dawn, and the waking world was very beautiful. Clytie had never seen the trees and the flowers. She had never heard the birds chirping, or the forest wind rustling the leaves. She had never smelled the fragrance of the meadows, or seen the morning dew upon the grass. She was dazed by all these wonders, and thought she must be dreaming, but soon she forgot all about them, for the eastern sky blazed suddenly with light. Great purple curtains were lifted, and slowly a great ball of dazzling fire appeared, blinding her eyes with its beauty. She held her breath, and stretched out her arms toward it, for she knew at once that this was the glorious light she had dreamed about and longed for. This was the sun. In the midst of the light was a golden chariot drawn by four fiery steeds, and in the chariot sat a wonderful smiling king, with seven rays of light playing around his crown. As the steeds mounted higher and higher in their path, the birds began to sing, the plants opened their buds, and even the old sea looked happy. Clytie sat all day upon the rock, her eyes fixed upon the sun, with a great love and longing in her heart. She wept when the chariot disappeared in the west, and darkness came over the earth. The next day, from sunrise to sunset, she gazed upon the sun, and at night she refused to go home. For nine days and nights she sat with her golden hair unbound, tasting neither food nor drink only longing more and more for the smile of the glorious king. She called to him, and stretched out her arms, yet she had no hope that he would ever notice her, or know of the great love that filled her heart. 
on the tenth morning when she leaned over the water she was amazed for instead of her own face a beautiful flower looked up at her from the sea she gazed long and at length in wonder she knew the truth her yellow hair had become golden petals her green dress had turned into leaves and stems and her little feet had become roots which fastened her to the ground Clytie had become the small and humble image of the sun the next morning when she lifted her face to the beautiful light it was so radiant with happiness that the great king himself seemed to smile back kindly at the happy little flower and so Clytie began her life upon the earth and she became the mother of a large family of flowers with bright faces like her own her children are called sunflowers and you may find them scattered all over the country even in the dry and dusty places where other flowers will not grow and if you care to you may find out for yourselves whether or not it is true that all the sunflowers in the world turn upon their stalks from sunrise until sunset so that they may always keep their faces toward the sun end of section thirty three recording by pamela Krantz.